Hello and welcome to another webcast with Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. My name is Seth David and I'll be your host for the next 10 minutes. And we bring you this week part two in a series on how to track your business in Excel. This is for people who, for one reason or another, they have a brand new business, don't want to go to the expense of QuickBooks, don't want to spend the time on QuickBooks. They've already got Excel on their computer. You've already learned how to use it a little bit, at least enough to enter data. And so what we're doing is we're developing a template here that you can use to track your business in Excel. And the purpose, of course, is to teach you how to develop such a template. And also, if you want, at the end of the series, or even now, you can email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com, and we'll work something out as far as me making this template available to you. This will take some time, and it will be sophisticated when it's done. By the end of the series, I'm going to show you how to do pivot tables and how to really make this work for you. Uh, to a good extent. So I'm probably going to want to charge a little something for it. Maybe $10, maybe $50, something in between. But email me Seth at NerdEnterprises.com if you're interested in the template. And uh, by the time the series is done, it'll be available in our Learning Center, which can be found at www.NerdEnterprises.com. Without further ado, I want to bring you right into our webcast because uh, we've got a lot going on. We're really important here. So let's... Uh, go to a full screen view here and I'll begin sharing I'll share my desktop with you because I'm kind and I'm caring and ooh, now you're seeing my emails so that's not what I intended to show you let me minimize everything there now last week we went over a template I showed you how to create a sales template just to track sales of products now if you're tracking sales of hours all you really have to do is replace the item with whatever service item code that you might use in say QuickBooks or some other program. Now, so that part's kind of an easy transition. I always do things in terms of products because it's more complicated with products. You can always simplify this down to cover a service-based business model. So this was created last week. I've done some formatting. I've made some enhancements. I also added some dummy data from a QuickBooks sample file because I want to eventually show you how to use the pivot table to do some reporting on sales and so on. But today what we want to do is we want to start building a transaction register because aside from selling products, I'm going to be spending money, I'm going to be writing checks, I'm going to be charging a credit card to pay for things. There's a lot that I'm going to be doing aside from sales that I want to be able to track if I'm not going to use accounting software. And I thought about this. Initially I was thinking I should have a register for each account, for each bank account and for each credit card account. But the problem with that is it's going to then become cumbersome if I want to create one pivot table showing all of your expenses. So I'm going to have one combined transaction register that's how I decided to lay this out you could do yours differently if you're watching these webcasts and learning to do it on your own but this is how I've decided to do it and I think when you watch these through until the end of the series you'll understand why it becomes important to do it this way what you will lose is you will lose the ability to keep track of your balance in a particular account in here and it's not completely lost I'm also going to show you how to use a pivot table to report on just one account that's represented here and based on that how you'll be able to compare your transactions transactions with the transactions at the bank and do sort of a pseudo bank reconciliation. But either way, I want to get right into this because I've laid this transaction register out with date. I need to type. I need to know what am I doing? Am I writing a check? Am I making a deposit? So the transaction type. I need a name. What's the who am I who am I doing this with? Who am I buying it from? Who am I receiving money from? I need a number if I'm writing a check. If I charge on a credit card, you can put a reference number there. I need a source account and a destination account. I'm using simple terms instead of the accounting terms. The source account essentially is the account I'm using to pay for the thing, or if I'm receiving money, the account where the money is going. The destination account is the other side of that transaction. In accounting terms, this would be debit and credit. So the destination account is what else is being affected. If I'm receiving money, then it's probably hitting accounts receivable since we're tracking our sales separately over here. If I'm paying for something, it's probably some expense account. And then, of course, I'm going to put the amount. And keeping it very simple, which I always like to do, that's what we've got laid out here for now. Let me shrink my view here down to 90 percent and now what we need to do is we need to develop lists because the other important thing here is that we want to make sure we can maintain consistency I don't want to have typos because later on when I run a pivot table if I have typos so if I have check spelled C-H-E-C-K and somewhere else I have check spelled C-H-C-K-E because I just made a typo then that's going to slow me down and I have to go back and fix that so I want to prevent that so the first thing I want to do is create my transaction types lists so we're going to create a new tab here and 
And you'll notice last week, you may notice, that I had a customer list that I started and I've gotten rid of that because we're going to do one combined list for all names, whether it's a customer or a vendor, and we're going to define that using a column that we're going to call type. So we're going to call it a name type. So that's where we're going to say if this is a customer or a vendor, and it may be both. So the first thing is transaction types, or we can actually have one place for all lists. Okay, so now I have transaction types. And if I could type, it would be helpful. So here's a simple one column list. I have a check. I have a credit card charge. I have a deposit. Maybe a transfer. And we'll leave it at that for now. We can always expand upon this later. But I want to go through this quickly so I can cover everything. I have just a few more minutes. So here's my transaction types. I insert name, define. Uh, your way is going to be to go to formulas, define name. I just do it the quick way on the keyboard. Transaction types is perfect. I click OK. Then I can come back to my transaction register and I just use the control shift down arrow. That's why I create these lines here by the way. So I can use my control shift down arrow and it stops me there. And then I define, I don't want to define actually, I want to go to my data tab and I want to validate data, data validation, and allow a list. Um, I need to enter a source. I can type F3. It gives me my names list. Transaction types. OK. OK. Come down here, and now whenever I use my drop arrow, I can choose from these. So that's perfect. We're going to create the next list. We're going to do names. Now names really need some space because I want more information. So I have names and then I have type and then I'm going to have my uh, street address 2 for a suite number, city, state, zip, phone, email. You can put whatever you want here. I'm just doing this quickly because I want to keep, I need to keep this under 10 minutes. So now let's call this, or say, we'll allow space for 100 names for now. Again, I'm assuming this is a small business, so that based on that, I don't need a whole lot of room. What I would probably wind up doing is moving this over to a different tab and actually doing it the way I originally set out to do, which is to put each list on its own tab. It'll probably make it easier in the long run. So let's come over here and put customer one, vendor one, this is going to be customer, this is going to be vendor. You can get a little crazy and expand upon this and have name types as its own list and use drop downs. Again, you want to make sure you're able to be consistent. And I'll probably set that up for next week and review it real quick. So now we have names. Now the name that you defined for the drop down has to be just one column. So I have my names. Again, I do a formulas define name this is going to be names click OK it doesn't like it define names let's go to apply names cancel it's telling me it already exists oh so I just use name plural now I can go back to my transaction register and I want to validate this one I go to data data validation allow list F3 name I'll have to go delete that names I think that's from a previous session that I did and I probably deleted it so that's my names now I have a drop down set up so I can choose my names and again it's always important to do it that way so I can be consistent so I don't have typos because especially when I'm rushing to enter a bunch of transactions it lends itself to having typos so that's how you set up your lists you want to do that and set up lists for each of these things. I don't need a number list, but I need my accounts. And these two are going to refer to the same list. I'm going to have one list for accounts. And that's the only other list we need to create. I'll have it set up for you next week. Have a great week. Email me, Seth, at nerdenterprises.com. And next week, we'll have the list set up so we can start actually entering transactions. And then I'll start showing you how to use pivot tables to enter or to report on your data. Because that's going to be how you're going to get your reporting function done is through your pivot tables. Have a great week.